Democracy That Delivers is brought to you by the Center for International Private Enterprise. And now to your host, Ken Jakes. Hi, everyone. This is Ken Jakes. I'm the host of Democracy That Delivers, our weekly podcast here at SITE. And I'm joined in studio by Narayan Adhikari. I hope I pronounced that right. Yeah, exciting. And all all the way from Nepal, we're really glad to have you here. Uh, He is the co-founder of the Nepal and Nepal representative for the Accountability Lab. How are you doing today? Doing well. Thank you for having me today, Ken. Yeah, thanks so much for coming. And uh, so why don't we start off and, and and talk about the work that you're doing and specifically what is the Accountability Lab? Sure. Uh, Accountability Lab is a nonprofit. So we started about eight years ago. Uh, and so the, the work that first work we started from Nepal and uh, with my founder, uh, Blair Glenkos. So with Accountability Lab, we support change makers to develop tools and accountability and integrity in their communities. Um, yeah, uh, and we sort of create a community for for accountability uh, overall. So uh, how how did this idea come about? What what were the things that that caused you to to start this uh, enterprise? Uh, actually, my founder uh, he used to work with World Bank. Uh, okay. F- uh, and uh, you know, he been traveling a uh, different uh, country in the world, like including Nepal and India and, you know, Afghanistan uh, and some of the West African countries. And, uh, you know, while working with the World Bank and some other big institution, he realized that accountability is the key. Uh, and my background was also very similar. I also involved with the World Bank and also in the youth movement in, in the country. So I also realized that, you know, uh, you know, this accountability is the heart of everything. So I think until and unless we are able to build accountability, so we don't really get a good results of anything. Uh, so we, we realized that, you know, why not to, you know, start something that are more engaging, positive, and also promote innovation around, uh, you know, uh, accountability or, you know, in, the, in anti-corruption and those sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, that that's key. I think is is the anti-corruption component of this. And let, let's talk a little bit. Let's step back and give the listeners really why we're doing this and why you're doing this over there. What 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 are the dynamics in Nepal that necessitate uh, an organization like Accountability Lab? Uh, sure. I think we know that we have a uh, you have all kind of problems like corruptions and 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 uh, you know. You know the lack of uh, good public services. Uh, you know in, in education and health and and actually and there's a, a threats in democracy and human rights and you know we know that you know all kind of problems including environment and, and climate change and the way that you know we've been trying to deal with these problems were very uh, very negative and and uh, focusing more on compliance and and, and rule of law. Uh, and I think rule of law and compliance is also important. But uh, if these rules and uh, the compliance and institution if doesn't fit with the with the relationship, uh, you know, and behaviors of the individuals uh, as a whole, it doesn't get the good results. So um, it needs requires a really positive and collaborative uh, sort of ecosystem where people from different backgrounds like young people have ideas and, and innovation could also contribute on account in accountability building but at the same time CSOs uh, medias and 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 private sectors uh, could create a community where they also learn from each other's and create a sort of collective action to really fight the the, the strong network of uh, you know the corruption uh, in the country yeah and it, like like a lot of other developing countries around the world, uh, and Nepal is certainly not unique to this, uh, and that's why you're here. Uh, what are some of the main areas of corruption that you're looking at now uh, that, that your accountability lab is, is looking at and, and trying to address? I think, like like you said, uh, you know, like in many other countries, corrupts the nature of the corruption is quite a similar in it's Nepal. It's very similar. Cultures are different. Yeah, but it, exactly. it always fascinated me, no matter what. I worked a lot in Eastern Europe. And uh, and and some in, in in Latin America as well, but the cultures were so different. But yet the types of corruption that's being employed are very very similar wherever you go. It just always, it always fascinated me. Uh, I think that the, the the intent behind corruption I, I is, is exactly right. the same because 
And what is that intent? What, what the do you intent think? The intent is like people just uh, greedy and they want to, uh, you know, earn money and hold power and, and misuse that, you know, the interested power, uh, you know. And the ways they go about doing that are very similar. Exactly. And it's, it's, it's like you said, it's, the difference is the culture and the context and the intensity, right? Exactly. The, the more businesses you have, the chances, the, more, uh, the chances of more corruption is there, right? So Nepal is a small country. It's very, you know, low, low income. Mm-hmm. However, the, you know, uh, you know the, the, the amount of corruption is pretty high. Right. It's everywhere. So from petty corruptions to... From the you know, street level all the way up. street level to, yeah. like, you know, you go, you know, like, a, as a pub individual, if you go and get, to get a public servi- service, you know, which you sh- are supposed to get it in free, but you have to pay some yep. bribes. On top, yeah. Right? And it's also... It's or, the, or the policeman on the street, they pull someone over, and uh, living in the Republic of Georgia, I, I had a project there uh, 20 years ago or so, a little, little more than that. And we used to call it lunch money for the policemen. <laughs> we so, call it tea, tea money. <laughs> tea money, exactly. It's, it's the same concept. Exactly. exactly. So from low level all the way up through the system. All the way, way up to the systemic. And then I think it's like the small acts on corruption is contributing for the for a large sort of systemic uh, you know, corruption, right? Right. It's a culture also. So the people got into this behavior and then it eventually per- to, to, to take the because it becomes part of the culture exactly and then it's just uh, and also somehow like country like in Nepal it's somehow culture you know socially accepted you know exactly uh, because it's been so long uh, it's like it's not a bribe it's a gift it's a gift or <laughs> it's sort of like a, a, a tips you know it's a tip exactly um, and then you know even, even if you get if you get a service uh, very quickly uh, somebody is, you know, like the government services giving you service very quickly, nicely, uh, you know, without uh, taking much time, without taking bribe. So people still doubt, am I getting the right service? Right. Do, you know, do I, am I getting the right certificate or is the certificate original? You know, there's a lot of, you know, uh, lack of confidence on, on that. So how do, you, how do you attack that problem on a cultural level? Do you do it from the ground up? Or do you do it higher up the food chain? How, how, how are they doing it in Nepal? How are you doing it at the accountability lab? Good question. I think that's where some, uh, I wanted to uh, talk to you about like this about the cultural shift. So we have this program it's called Integrity Icon. Mm-hmm. We used to call it Integrity Idol. Uh, it's like a pop idol, mm-hmm. but not for dancing and singing. Mm-hmm. It is really about you know highlighting those honest uh, civil. This star- is a television program. It's a TV- television mm-hmm. programs, so it's highlighting those honest public servants, uh, and then using them as a role model, uh, and engaging a lot of young people uh, around that. Uh, you know, uh, you know that's it, so important because public education. In, in showing people that there are alternative ways of doing business and, and doing things, I think it's a very powerful tool. Exactly. This is very powerful because it's positive and it's not finger pointing, right? right? It's, not, uh, it's not naming and shaming. It's really about naming and faming. And it's more focusing on what works uh, rather than what does not work. But at the same time, you know, considering on... Uh, why things are not working. It's not just like somebody, okay, for example, a policeman takes some money. Right. Uh, and you call it tea time? Is that what you... Yeah. yeah. Just for tea or whatever reason. Whatever, yeah, lunch and you money. And you can't really find a longer-term solution by by punishing this policeman because this this is just the symptoms. Mm-hmm. The corruption is, I think, it's more of a collective action problem. It is, yeah. And there are all underlying uh, causes. So I think there's... Like you're saying, the shifting values and culture and this kind of social norms is so important if you really want to uh, build a foundation for accountability, and that eventually you know contribute on, on 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 you know, you know anti corruptions uh, actually on building integrity. Right. Uh, so and then at, uh, we we hope that you know work you know having that the alliance of people with integrity from government, from private sectors, from civil society, uh, it does i think two things one is to really create hopes to the society particularly to the younger generation because if you look at it in nepal a lot of young people are uh, so tempted flying abroad 
mm-hmm. because of two reasons. One, from a wealthy families, they want to come to US and Europe for a study and yeah, education. Uh, s- education, yeah. is because they don't see that there is there is an environment, right. there is an opportunity. They don't trust the system, and those who are poor, they are flying to Middle East look, and look Malaysia. Look at the opportunity, exactly. Yeah. So all kind of opportunity, and it's something. It's uh, it's also forceful for them, like because of the. Uh, you know, the system doesn't really supporting them and they don't have a trust in the system. And these young people do, never consider... So it's like a lack of hope. Lack of hope. Yeah. So the integrity icon is really generating that hope. Right. right? Seeing that uh, role models. Is this a national program? It, it, is it? A, it is now a global program. So we started six years ago in Nepal. We just wrapped up our sixth episode. Okay. And now it's running in 10 countries. Oh, so 10 countries, two, just not only Nepal. Exactly. So okay. two weeks two weeks ago, I was in Mexico, and okay. we're starting from this year. So So do you, you, have, do you have locals do the program in, in, in the country, and they do it in their native language, obviously? And yeah. Okay, great. Six countries, that's terrific. Uh, ten countries. Oh, ten countries. Yeah, okay. six years. So we started oh, so, okay. in South of South Asia. We started in uh, which countries? Pakistan. If you can remember? Yeah, we in Pakistan. We started three years ago. It's okay. going really well. Sri Lanka uh, from last year. Uh-huh. This is our second year in Sri Lanka. So one of the interesting thing about this campaign is that we don't have to be there as an organization to do this. For example, you just kind of lay the framework. Exactly, it's yeah. kind of like franchising. Uh, we make home, we we, li- we are licensing them. So the Transparency International, you know, f- organizations working on anti-corruption for many years, have a g- good network and 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 knowledge on this field. Realize that building integrity is uh, much more important uh, and 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 a good way to build uh, in, to fight against corruption. So they invited us to do Integrity Icon in Sri Lanka, and they're running it. So in Africa, we do in Liberia, we do in Mali, Nigeria, Niger, and from next next year, we are expanding our work in Zimbabwe. So it's all over the world. Yeah, and also interestingly, the uh, we are also doing it in the U.S. from next really? year. Really? Yeah, we're starting from Philadelphia in a you know. Uh, Interesting, but using the same concept, same format. Exactly, the format might be a little, a little bit, bit different. different. Yeah, because of the cultures. Different. Because of the cultures yeah. and content, it is not exactly like American Idols or or, or right. whatever pop idols, but uh, you know the whole concept is like you know. Uh, naming and faming honest public servants, right. uh, and then creating that alliance and, and network for that know, brings up an action. interesting point. And I mentioned yeah. it a while ago that you know my the way I observed it is that cultures are very different all over the world, but the problems are essentially the same. Right. Uh, what is your experience of working with this program in these various countries? What what, what are some of the commonalities that you see? Uh, I don't directly work with uh, all these countries. We have our global team and our. Uh, my what are some fun. of the stories here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, like you said, there's a you know the problems is quite similar, the, but the cultures are different. I think the one of the uh, the similar uh, you know the culture is that the naming and saming is being very very prominent in all this nation. So, okay, there is a problem. There is there is corruption. There is nepotism, and there's all kind of. You know, uh, you know, you know, injustice and all, but people have no tools to engage uh, around these problems creatively and innovatively. And the younger generation, they want to engage, and before they they got trends into this kind of behaviors, and there is no opportunity for them to to engage creatively and positively. So. Um, so everybody, uh, but at the same time, people are also hoping for good, you know, hoping for nice and right. uh, feeling good, uh, sort of engaging positively. And they, there was no such opportunity. So I think we realized that, you know, studying integrity icon from all, in all these countries, the people have really uh, praised this, you know, movement and people, you know, got involved and, you know, we are getting really good traction that shows that there is there is a need of you know you know creating that culture of integrity and positivity rather than you continue you know pushing for you know uh you know pushing like bad doors behind the bars and you know um yeah and then there's another thing that we also do side by side is we call accountability incubator Mm -hmm. which is a which is like you know, inviting young people who have ideas, you know, using their skills, whatever skills they have, film uh, or music, or theater or sports. So it's uh, it's it's sort of a business incubation, but for the nonprofit leaders, mm-hmm. they will come 
to this incubation for a year. And they develop the ideas. How long has this been going on? It's 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 going on since the beginning, like eight years. Okay, so yeah, it's like quite yeah. a while. So it's really about you know, in one hand, we need a innovation on 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 this fight against corruption, mm -hmm. right? So where the innovation is among this crowd, young people, right? They can right. bring with technological innovation or using their like a lot of kind of cultural tools, musics and arts and films mm -hmm. and you know this kind. So the so we thought that you know creating that cohorts of young people. Uh, that comes up with innovation can be used as a tool, uh, you know, and anti-corruptions or, or building integrity. Give well. me some examples, some stories of success that you've seen on, on, on both accounts, both the television show and also uh, with, with the other. Um, with the with the other, let me give you one example. Like almost six years ago, we 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 work with these groups. Uh, they run a film school. Mm -hmm. They just had an idea like running a film school, uh, but they didn't have a support uh, and opportunity. So I met them and then we had a lot of uh, discussion uh, and chat. So they started like six years ago uh, as a film company. The idea is to invite young people and teach them on filming skills, basic editing and uh, script right. writings. And, and then now they have about 300 people already well-trained and they made more than 100 films uh, okay. they brought up all the amazing stories like how you know you cannot see every th problems and these are mostly young people they're mostly young people yeah. like below 30 years old right like, mostly like 20 to 25 years and that's old. where the cultural change really exactly takes it and it's also giving a sort of a changing perception on people people none of the parents the you know the, you know like their uh, especially younger in a girl to to go into filming uh, right. industry right right so this i mean for this like young people they're getting opportunity to learn new skills but at the same time they are engaging on the issue that they care about corruption climate change and environment and lgbt and those kind of stuff but at the same time because they have a skills they make some money so that's why we call it accountability entrepreneur right so we call them accountrepreneur oh okay so uh, and, and it's my experience working a long time on a non-profit sector. So one of the pain on me is like you are always asking money from others. Right. You know, doing non-profit, not necessarily you always have to go and ask money. But you can be creative and be entrepreneurial, right? So that's why we started this this thing so that young people who can contribute on social chain, change, but at the same time find a ways to generate revenues for their livelihoods. Right. Let's kind of shift gears, and and I don't know what your organization is doing. This is the reason I'm asking the question. But uh, on the government level, uh, when we're talking about uh, government responsibility and um, governance issues, uh, are you working with uh, politicians, members of the government on, on some of these issues? Uh, yeah, a little bit, uh, but mostly on the local government local level. Local government, okay. Yes, so we work with, uh, with 20... Uh, municipalities okay. on the ground and we have this project called uh, Citizen Help Dex so it's, a, it's a feedback uh, mechanism mm -hmm. and it, it's really uh, help the community and the government uh, to interact in a friendly and, and, and in a very positive way because everything we do uh, we do from accountability lab is really building relationship and right. creating uh, creating the niche for people to to meet, greet, and 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 have a constructive dialogues. So um, this uh, project is really really um, interesting, and and it's creating a huge uh, you know opportunity and good impact at the community level. So before before we had the culture of like you know it's like finger pointing. So citizens were looking at governments and saying, oh you guys are not doing well, and the governments are no, you just you know keep talking and just, just ignore it, ignore it. So we are not, we are collecting information, uh, uh, data from the citizen, you know, in the forms of rumors. In the f we have something a rumor tracking, uh, you know, we collect their grievances and all kind of feedbacks, and we categorize them and we, we give it to the go local government and also help the local government in terms of organizing those information and find the ways to respond, using different kinds of uh, you know uh, stuff like town hall meetings, mini meetings. We do film school in the communities. We we train local artists, uh, and then they play around the local issues uh, in a fun and creative ways. And there's a lot of young people are interested in coming into into this dialogue. And then they requested to have a mayor with youth 
programs. Right. So they design it. So then now the mayor and the deputy mayor are meeting these young people regularly uh, every every uh, every two weeks mm-hmm. and having a very open uh, open and constructive dialogues. Uh, and it's really changing their perception because they thought that you know when going out to community and talking with people would be a big hassle, so they all keep talking, so you can't do anything. But now for them as an elected representative, it is an incentive. So the more you go to the people, right. the more you listen about your problems. But at the same time, the people will tell you what to do, uh, and they will support you. They will help right. you. They will come up with a lot of solutions. So this this model is really about like finding lo- solutions locally. And using that as a model uh, to, to, to change in the system and the programs. Uh, yeah. That kind of leads me to my next question. We, we talk at site a lot uh, about the foundation of democracy being respect for the rule of law. That that's kind of the centerpiece is, is, is the rule of law aspect of that. Uh, how far has that come? in Nepal is that evolved where, where do you see that now no it's evolved it's evolved I think Nepal uh, generally the people are very nice so people generally they don't break the rules um, and then we have very very good social capital so people are very much you know very much willing to support to others including government and other communities and this, because since uh, 1990, we had this, uh, since we had this democracy, you know. Right. Um, and the culture of rule of law and, you know, kind of human rights and, and the constitutionalism become quite a popular. But now after the new constitution and right. new, new election, and especially since we had this. It brings it to the forefront. Brings it to the forefront and there's a more opportunity for them to collaborate, to, to, to create dialogues and. And to realize in so there's a general awareness of that exactly yeah. exactly and there's we have a, a lot of new uh, schools that are you know doing uh, education on, on around this space so yeah. I think it's really evolving and it's 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 growing uh, but overall I think more than what it says in in the written uh, document as a rule of law I right. think it's a cultural it is. thing uh, because people generally like. We're never colonized, right? Right. So, and we're never like had to, you know, uh, be so uh, like against with uh, some external forces. So the people are generally nice and calm. You know, acceptance is sometimes it's also bad because the the, the level of acceptance and corruption is also <laughs> yes. there. But however, there is a there is a the sense of you know ownership uh, on on stuff that are that's why we and also we have a diverse communities. It's not just that what you write in a constitution or rule, but there are like customary rules right. because of the diverse communities we mm-hmm. have. There's a language and all. So people tend to have that behavior of accepting the differences. Right. And that is also impacting on, on w- when it comes to accepting rule of laws or any of this. Yeah. Right. So what's the connection between the rule of law and anti-corruption efforts there? Uh, how is that evolving? Um, in, it's, ter- it's, in terms of laws being passed, in terms of cultural changes, I mean, you mentioned a few while ago, especially on the local level, and and of course the new new constitution. How does that play into this? Uh, new constitutions in Britain, uh, they you know they're really good, but it's also very new, right? It's just right, brand uh, new. Yeah, four and a half years. Yeah, very uh, new. We have institutions that are built to to fight against corruptions, and there are like sixteen. Uh, oversight bodies, right? From anti-corruption agency to the Office of Auditor General to the you know Vigilance Center, there are like sixteen different. Yeah. So uh, the structures there. The structures is there. Rules are there. Yeah. We have fantastic rules. Implementation, though. Implementation is, is not there. You're right. And when there is no implementation and there is a or enforcement, there is no enforcement. Then the people don't have trust. Right. I think. And also at the same time, these but institutions. building those institutions is a great first step, though. Exa- exactly. This yeah. needs to be built, uh, and they need to have a strong mandate and resources. They need to really work hard to not to just for enforcement, but also to promote the culture, right? Right. And, and sifting that culture perceptions, but it is not really happening there. So we yeah. still have a sort of political transition. Right. But eventually, I think we'll. Uh, my hope is we'll, we'll get there. Uh, if you have more, that's why there's having right individuals in this institution is really, really important. Mm-hmm. So, 
uh, no matter how good institution you have, good role, uh, good rules or laws you have, if you don't have an in- in- individual that are honest, right. you know, you don't really. Uh, and make you have a to difference. have the will of the general public too. Exactly. And it sounds like, especially on the local level, that you're starting to see that. Is, is yeah. that is that correct assessment? Do you think? Oh yeah, as- absolutely. If there is no will from the citizen, if people are p- people are not excited about the, yeah. about uh, change, and that's where your organization comes in. Exactly. If the people don't have hope, you know, the, you don't see any any difference. Any difference? Yeah. So the. Uh, of, I mean, there's one of the challenges that not every part of the country you have that 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 level of excitement right. that need to have from the community level. You know, the proactive engagement is not there. So through this process, we realize that you know the more we go there and spend with time uh, and try to understand the problems and and build that relationship and connect them with the uh, local organizations mm-hmm. and and create a you know sort of a forum, uh, you know. This really help. This really help for people, and then they realize that their own duties and responsibilities. That's it's not that we always finger point on governments, but we also also rea- need to realize our own responsibilities and duties. And, and right. as a citizen, right. This is a perfect uh, segue into the the final part of this program. I call it five years from now, and uh, I want to find out if you're an optimist or pessimist. So we're going to jump in a time machine and we're going to go ahead five years from now. You have a new constitution that's four years old. What's the country going to look like five years from now? What's the country? Uh, beautiful. Yeah. More developed. Yeah. Uh, so you're optimistic. I'm very optimistic. Yeah. yeah. So you're seeing you're seeing changes that you you want to see. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah. Y- give me some examples. Uh, w- I think. W- w- what's going to happen? Where's Where's your organization going to be in five years? What will you be doing? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> uh, I think we'll be continue um, working on the space, but my hope is, uh, you know, in five years or 20, 10 years down the line, we don't have to do all this kind of work because there's already uh, a good, uh, you know, governance and accountability and right. there's no corruption. You go to the next step. Uh, yeah, we go to the next step. Um, yeah. But my hope is that since this local government uh, is a new practice, yeah, um, they are just in three years of their service. So, and and this is, I, I consider this is a sort of a learning, uh, you know, this kind of like incubation for them. Mm-hmm. Learning by doing and yeah. they learn. And it takes and time. It takes time. And the, the next election, mm-hmm. uh, my hope is that the more young people will get el- elected. And also from people, not just from the political fraternity, but also from businesses, from uh, media, civil society, the mix of people, uh, you know, will be interested to to come to, to this political space and and you know, be ready to 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 lead uh, the society. Uh, yeah, and the the situation of rule of law, transitional justice, would be would be much better. Uh, and and I think Nepal has a huge potential uh, to grow faster because it's a small country. I think I met people like uh, everywhere in the world. They love it. They love. Yes, they fall in love. Country. They would love to come to Nepal. Those who have been there, they would like to yeah. come back again. They want to bring their loved one. Um, so I think there's a potentials of a growing economy through tourism and yeah. uh, you know all kind of cultural history and yeah. you know. Uh, what are the know. big industries there? We, we all know tourism's big. Uh, we have we don't really have a like any big industries. There's like you know some some agricultural products, agriculture, yeah. uh, and then like you know uh, handicrafts. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you know we has uh, the Nepali carpet was very very popular mm-hmm. a long time ago, but now it's sort of falling down. Right. Uh, but yeah, tourism is re- is really the. The, the, big, the main driver. Main driver. Yeah. And the next year, government is uh, doing this tourism year, 2020. Mm-hmm. And, so it's going to uh, be a big focus. It's in the book, big fo- focus. And they're now also working on a lot of infrastructures, like mm-hmm. the, the two more international airport is under construction. Mm-hmm. They just had a Chinese prime minister, and they have this bilateral agreement of building railways and tunnel, yeah. and there's the Indians with the hydros. Yeah. So, I mean, these are good because we The don't building blocks are there. Building blocks are there, but I hope that they will be implemented. That's one of the, the biggest challenges that Nepal had since many times is we, we, we had all this bilateral agreement but never completed. 
So there's there's not enough uh, public engagement on this process. Right. So I hope that when there is when the political stability is there, new constitutions will help more on you know support more public engagement and right. and and contribute on and the positive uh, pressure on doing development. Right. And go, get good deliveries. Well, thanks so much for coming by. This was a lot of fun. Um, Thank you for having and, me. And uh, I hope you come back soon. So I hope you enjoy your trip to Washington and, and safe travels back home. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I love to come to Washington all the time. This is like my second home. Oh, that's and terrific. It's a lot of creative people yeah. Uh, and, yeah, great ideas. Yeah. Great. Thank well, you. Well, thanks so much. We'll see everybody next week. You've been listening to Democracy That Delivers. For more information about the Center for International Private Enterprise, please go to our website at sipe.org. That's C-I-P-E dot org. Thanks for listening.